Hello, I made a video a couple nights ago when I first got this really awesome Wurlitzer electric piano. I've been wanting one of these forever. I love these things and I was lucky enough to get one. Um, I have to take it apart again and take the top off of it here and I'm going to try to tune it and voice it because uh, these keys are a little softer than these. And while I'm doing that, I wanted to uh, show you the inside of it and show you how it works. Uh, this is an electrical, electromechanical electric piano. So unlike the modern ones that are like a digital circuit board that kind of mimics the sounds of other pianos, this actually has mechanisms inside it like a real piano has. Um, and that has pickups in it that pick up the sound. So when you hit the keys, you're actually hearing the hammers hit a reed in here and the reeds are mounted on a pickup bar and it's picking it up kind of like a guitar or more of my clavinet if you've seen the clavinet video I made. So if I turn it off, I don't know if you can hear it, but you can actually hear it acoustically like you would a real piano or an upright piano. Then you turn it on. It has a speaker inside. So, so I'm going to open it up and show you uh, how it looks inside and how it actually works. So. All right, so first things first, you want to make sure that it is unplugged because there's a lot of high voltage on this pickup rail in here and it will shock you. I don't know firsthand, but I did see a video on YouTube where a guy shocked himself pretty good with it. And that's true for all these old instruments or radios or anything like that. Definitely be careful if, and don't mess with them when they're plugged in because they can they, they can kill you in some situations, but uh, this old stuff will shock you uh, really good. So there's three screws underneath here to take out. And then you wanna take off these knobs, the vibrato and the volume knob here. Oh, there we go. And then after that, it just lifts up kind of like a car hood. Straight up. And then it kind of just fits in these little slots here on the back. It comes right off. We'll set that here. And now you have this hum shield right here. All right, so now that it's apart, we can get a closer look at how it works. It's, you got your circuit board and it needs new capacitors, uh, but it sounds pretty good. I don't know if it sounds the way it's supposed to, but I'm surprised, but I'm sure it knows it to be replaced. Your speakers, just funny because the ripped one is the one that works. It's old, awesome transformer. And it's hard to tell, but if you look really close there, I have it written down. It has the date. So this is a 1971 Wurlitzer 200. So... Up here is how it works. So if I hit these keys, I'm gonna do the higher one so you can hear it. So as I hit these, these hammers are gonna come up and hit this reed. So if you look under here, this little metal thing right there, that is the reed. Kind of similar to like a reed you would put in your mouth if you had a, a clarinet or a saxophone or something or like a tuning fork and it hits that you can hear it acoustically and then right under there if you can look in between it and that metal piece on top there that's the pickup so that is what's actually picking up the sound here's a side view of it so you can get a little better idea of how it works so if you look close there, you can see the hammer and the hammer is going to go up and hit the reed. Uh, this is the lowest note, so this is the biggest reed. So, so that hammer is going to go up as I hit the key and hit this reed. And you can see the reed vibrating right there. And then this knocks it back down. So you've got these rubber grommets on the back here. And this is responsible for bringing the key back down. And if I get here close to the actual mechanism here. Let's 
It's really cool, actually, and especially for, I mean, this one was built in 71, but the idea of this first came out in 54 or 56, I think. It was whenever the one the Wurlitzer 110 came out. So if you think about, you know, this technology and the way this sounds and how it worked in, in, in the 50s is insane. You have an actual piano that you can carry around with you, so... And that is how it works. So I'm going to uh, tune it and voice it. I might have a separate video for that. And I'm also going to have a video coming soon of maybe like some famous songs that you've heard of that use the Wurlitzer whenever I learn them and I, and I get a little more into playing it. But yeah, this is the uh, inside and how a electrical mechanical piano, electric piano works. The Rhodes is very similar, except the Rhodes uses tines instead of reeds. I'm not real familiar what those look like or anything. Um, but yeah, this is the inside of the Wurlitzer. So thanks for checking it out.